Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the all-new M2 Mac Mini. Apple announced this last week, and now it's available in stores. Now it starts at $599, which is for the base model a pretty good deal. That comes with an M2, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of storage. However, at the high end with the M2 Pro processor, we can go up to a 12-core CPU, 19-core GPU, and 16-core neural engine, 32 gigs of RAM, and 8 terabytes of storage, also a 10 gig ethernet adapter. So you can really spec this thing out. This is actually what was available in store and it's the base M2 Pro. So if we flip it over here, you can see that we have 16 gigabytes of unified memory, 512 gigabytes of storage with the M2 Pro chip, which means it's got a 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU and 16 core neural engine. That's what was actually available. Now let's go ahead and unbox it. So we'll pull this tab here, no longer plastic wrappings or anything like that. There we go. And then we can open it up. We'll also compare this with the previous M1 Mac Mini. So let's go ahead and open it here. And there we are. So there's the Mac Mini itself in the package. It's a silver color. We don't have a space gray color this year, just like we didn't with the M1. It's a little bit heavy. It's technically a little bit heavier than the previous generation if you have the Pro processor. Let's set that aside and see what we've got in the box. So we've got our typical literature in the box and it looks like we've got our Mac Mini Quick Start Guide. It's showing a studio display with it, a little warranty card, and a giant Apple sticker that we have here. So just one Apple sticker. Let's put that away and we also have the power adapter. It doesn't look like we get anything else. So we've got our AC power adapter. Of course, this will vary depending on country, but that's the AC power adapter there. Let's take a look around the Mac Mini. Now let's peel these covers off here. And you'll see here it says Mac Mini on the bottom. It's a rubber base. And then on the side here, this is covering the ports. They do this with Mac Minis for some reason. As far as ports on the back, we actually have more this time around if you order it with the M2 Pro. So we have our power button, we have our AC adapter, we have up to a 10 gig ethernet adapter. This isn't the 10 gig version as that wasn't available. We have four Thunderbolt 4 ports, an HDMI 2.1 port, and then USB and our audio jack here, and then also a fan outlet. Now this time around with these ports, we can support up to three external displays at once, two up to 6K 60 Hertz with Thunderbolt, or one at 4K 60 over HDMI. So all three of those together, or one display at 8K 60 Hertz, or one display at 4K 240 Hertz over HDMI. So we now have the option for all of those different display options if you're using this. We also have Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, and like I mentioned, that HDMI 2.1, which is a really nice upgrade. Now, before we compare this, I wanted to talk about our sponsor for this video, Caseku. This is something I've been using in many different videos, so thanks to them for sponsoring this video. It comes in clear blue or matching deep purple or space black colors. It's a protective case that adds grip and looks great, providing a raised bezel around the screen and camera, but also has a hidden stand built in. The stand allows for a 40 to 120 degree angle and has a magnet in the ring of the stand that supports MagSafe accessories and charging. I really like the look of them, they feel premium and seem to protect everything around really well. And I'll leave a link to these in the description below and there's a discount code for 10% off. Now let's go ahead and compare this to the M1. Because we have an M2 Pro, we actually have some more options here for ports. So just a quick comparison side by side, you can see with the M2 version, we actually have an additional two Thunderbolt 4 ports. So it looks very familiar, but we have a couple extra ports there. And everything else is basically the same. If you have the M2 Pro, it's slightly heavier, but it's not anything that really matters as it's not a portable device. You're plugging it in, leaving it on your desk, and it's ever so slightly heavier. But other than that, it should be pretty good. So what we'll do is I'll go ahead and connect it. We'll get it set up and see what it can do as far as a disk speed test, Geekbench scores, video export test, and some final thoughts as well. Now I have the M2 Mac Mini connected to a Pro Display XDR at my office. So let's go ahead and set it up. 
We'll go ahead and click next as we select English for our language. Of course, select what's relevant to you. Give it just a moment here. Then we'll select our country. Sometimes this will pick automatically if you give it a moment, just like it did there. Otherwise, you can scroll to your country. Go ahead and click continue. Then if you need accessibility, you can set that up now. We'll click not now. Now I can join a network. After it joined the network, it says a software update is available for this Mac. This Mac will be updated to Mac OS 13.2. I want to do that. However, it must have shipped with 13.1 as it was probably ready for some time, maybe November, but we'll go ahead and click continue. Now it will install the system update. The update installed and now I'm back to the beginning. So let me get back through this. Mm -hmm. Now we're back to where we started with data and privacy. Then we can migrate from another Mac or just not now. I actually use iCloud for this where it just pulls everything over to the Mac. So let me go ahead and put in my Apple ID. Now it says, make this your Mac. You can customize all the settings or leave them as default. I'll typically just leave them and change them after if I want to. We'll click continue. And now we can choose to share iCloud analytics or not. We'll click continue again. And it already updated the wallpaper in the background. Now here we have file vault disk encryption and allow my iCloud to unlock it. I typically just leave that alone. And now we can set up touch ID if you have a touch ID enabled Mac or keyboard. So let's go ahead and set that up. And now we're to our desktop. And so this is the Mac mini running here. So if we go to the Mac, go to about this Mac, you can see it says M2 Pro, 16 gigabytes as far as RAM, and then Ventura 13.2. Now I'll go ahead and get all of the software I'll use for testing this on here, and then we'll continue. Now we'll test the disk speed and also Final Cut Pro export time, see if there's any difference, and also we'll test Geekbench as well. And we'll compare them with the M2 MacBook Air. This is a 16 gigabyte of RAM model with a one terabyte SSD. I also have a fully spec'd out 14 inch MacBook Pro M1 Max model, 64 gigs of RAM and eight terabytes of storage. So we'll use that to compare and see how the M2 Pro actually stacks up and see what we get out of it. Now, let me go ahead and test these. Now we have Blackmagic Designs disk speed test and we'll run this. Now I've tried this a couple times, let it cool down and see what we've got. So we'll just run it quickly. Everything is on default, just like the other devices. Let's go ahead and click start. And the best I see is about 34 or 3,500 megabytes per second write speed and about 3,000 megabytes per second read speed. So we'll let it run here for a moment as we talk about the comparison. So the disk speed test on the M2 MacBook Air with one terabyte drive came in at about 3,014 megabytes per second for write speed, 2,798 megabytes per second read speed. On the M1 Max though, that's where we get crazy speeds on the M1 Max fully spec'd out drive, which I would expect since it's a larger drive. So 6,353 megabytes per second write speed and 5,411 megabytes per second read speed. Of course, this can vary and if it heat soaks, it will slow down a little bit, but in general, it's pretty fast. It's as fast as the MacBook Air, a little bit faster in my tests. However, a larger drive, I would expect much faster speeds. So hopefully it increases. If you get larger speeds, 512 gigabytes is what was available for me. As far as Geekbench results, the M2 Pro on the Mac Mini scored 1,940 for single core. That's actually better than the M1 Max and even better than the regular M2, as you would expect. So not a huge jump, but a little bit of a bump up. However, multi-core scored a little less than the M1 Max. But as you can see, 11,959 compared to 12,639 on the M1 Max and 8,965 on the multi-core score on the M2 MacBook Air. Now, as far as the metal score, as far as the compute score, we have 46,942 compared to the M2 it's 29,953 and the M1 Max again jumps up to 67,442. So still the M1 Max is faster than the M2 Pro, but it's not faster than the M2 Max. So it's still fast enough. I think it will do most tasks for most people without a problem. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how long it takes to export a video. Now I've loaded the same file across all devices. And so as you can see, this is a Pixel 7 Pro 
versus iPhone 14 Pro Max comparison that I released some time ago, it's 17 minutes and 57 seconds long. So that should push the thermal limits of the M2 MacBook Air, and we'll see how this does. So I just have my watermark on it, and you can see the whole file here. I've deleted all generated media files, and then we'll export it using the same thing on all of them. So let me go ahead and delete those files here. We'll delete the generated library files across everything, make sure it's fair across all devices, and we'll go ahead and click OK, OK, and OK across all of them, and then we'll go ahead and get this exporting. And so we'll share this, and I'll share this using HEVC or H.265. We'll click Next, and then we can just save it to wherever we'd like. I'll just save it to my desktop on this device, and we'll time it using this case, case that actually stands up and using the timer on the iPhone. So let's go ahead and see if we can export this as close as possible on all of these. So let's see what we've got here. File, share, and then again, we have to add that destination. I just imported that setting from compressor here, so we had the same thing. And let's share it again. There we go. Same thing here. And we'll go ahead and hit next. And we'll just save it to YouTube videos. So on this one, again, we'll share it to the desktop. So we're ready to go on all of them. Let's go ahead and hit start. And then we'll click save on all of these. So try and get at the same time. And let's see what it does. Just a little status update. We're at 18% on the M1 Max, 10% on the M2 Pro Mac Mini, and 10% on the M2. And some of that, of course, is going to be due to the SSD speed as far as overall exporting. After 11 minutes and 39 seconds, the M1 Max completed exporting. It's fully done, ready to go, and should be viewable now. So if we go to YouTube videos, you can see it here, and it's 3.41 gigabytes. So a significant difference as the others are still neck and neck at 55%. We'll let these complete and see how long it takes. And so both of them finished at about the same time as far as the M2 Pro and the M2. However, compared to the M1 Max, that has to be a limitation of the overall SSD speeds. So I think the M2 Mac Mini is a really capable machine. The M1 was plenty fast for most tasks if you're editing video, and M2 will be great for that as well. The export, of course, could really benefit from larger SSDs with faster read and write speeds. The overall Chassis of it is nice and cool. The fan didn't really spin up, even exporting video or running Geekbench. I suppose if I ran Cinebench, it might push it a little bit more, but I think it's going to be a great machine going forward. Of course, you've got HDMI 2.1, so that means you can use it with much higher resolution displays or up to three displays if you want to do that. Let me know your thoughts about it, and if you'd like a long-term test, what you think about M2 overall, would you get the M2 or M2 Pro? And I would definitely go with 16 gigs of RAM or higher if you're planning to edit video or maybe use Logic Pro or something else. Otherwise, you could even get away with the base model at $599, and other places are discounting that as well. If there's anything else, though, you'd like to see, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.